to, to this second joint video that uh, Antonina and I have put together. And this is a, this is a really challenging case. And um, those of you who do watch the video, I really, we really would appreciate if you would uh, make some comments to let us know what you think, because it's, it's certainly not a, a straightforward or cut and dried case. So Antonina, can you give us some clinical history, please? Uh, hi, Philip, and hi, everyone. The clinical history of that case, it's actually a tumor of a uh, foot, 59-year-old uh, lady. And um, Philip, can you describe the uh, histological feature of that tumor? Okay, so we'll have a look at this and we can see that it's, it's largely an exophytic nodule because we can come across the epidermis uh, goes all the way across and I think we've got some tangential cutting at the bottom so we're not really seeing the actual base of the lesion. If I move it a bit higher magnification, um, you can see that's, that's epidermis, and then we've got the tumor. Um, and I want to go back slightly lower mag magnification again, just so that we look at the top. And if we scan, well, it's clearly ulcerated, and there's a bit of epidermis there, and then there's, we're not really seeing anything further. So it's grossly ulcerated. Um, I, I think, now I can't be absolutely certain, but I, I suspect that this is as near as we're going to get to continuity with the epidermis. But I, I have a sense that if one had the right cut, this would not. And so I think I would regard this as, a, as probably a poromatous tumor. Um, and now I'm going to go back down in magnification again, uh, and we'll look at, at a variety of fields. So um, if we're thinking of this as being porometers, then it's obviously um, a, showing very marked clear cell change. Um, and this, th th this will be due to intracytoplasmic glycogen. So um, then the next question I suppose we have to ask ourselves, is this benign or is it malignant? And um, when, you, when we look around, basically it's a rather bland looking tumor. Um, there's not really much in the way of pleomorphism, although that, there's a pleomorphic uh, cell there with a couple of nuclei and there's a mitotic figure but then um, I don't suppose uh, with the thing that's growing uh, to this size that finding mitoses here now that there's another one there should necessarily cause us uh, any great surprise. Um, now I I, I added some notations just to, to make a point. There, there's another mitosis there. I can't get, there's another mitosis. So there are quite a few mitotic figures. Now, um, I was trying to see if I could find any decent pleomorphism um, just to see whether we might look, think about this in terms of possibly being a malignant at crime poroma. And in this field, we can see our mitosis there, and there's another one there. And then we've got this field here where, you know, if you wanted to regard this as showing significant pleomorphism, I suppose the nuclei are very prominent there's a, a binucleate cell. But I have to be honest with you, um, I, I'm searching hard for pleomorphism because of the, the sting in the tail of this lesion. I, 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 on its own, 
I would be hard pushed to get terribly excited about this tumor, to be honest with you. Um, I would be thinking more in terms of benign than malignant. Um, but we, here's the catch, which makes this really, really interesting. What Antonina didn't tell her, us, because I told her not to tell us so that we wouldn't get biased, is the patient also had inguinal nodes. Isn't that right, Antonina? Yeah, it, it, it is inguinal lymph nodes that was sent at the same time with the primary tumor for consultation. Okay, and look at this. I mean, wow. I think we can be happy we're looking at lymph nodes. There, there are follicles. There's a couple of with showing germinal centers, and there's the capsule. So I'm sure we're pretty happy we're looking at a lymph node. And here is the same tumor. And again, it's, it's got the same morphology. It's as bland as you can get. In fact, w when I first looked at this case, I looked at the lymph node by mistake and I diagnosed this as... Um, well, because it was in a lymph node, I thought, well, it's got to be hydratinocarcinoma. But when you look at it, one's, I just wondered whether that's an intracytoplasmic or lumen or a bit of ductal differentiation. It's very hard to be sure. When I looked at this, I thought, wow, that's as bland and benign looking as you could ask for. And yet it's very obviously the same tumor that's occurring on the foot. So um, that, this, this case, I must say, has caused me a lot of consternation because I don't think in the absence of this lymph node that I would have been comfortable calling this tumor, a car the original, the primary tumor a carcinoma. One gets the sense that the nucleus there is being indented, so that might well be a... Uh, a bit of ductal differentiation. Unfortunately, I understand that um, there isn't any spare tissue for EMA and CEA. So my my uh, where I'm ending up is um, this looks like a metastasis. It, it looks awfully bland. The original tumor looks bland. Um, I'm having a hard job calling this whole thing malignant. Um, now, I know that there, is, uh, uh, there have been descriptions of so-called benign metastasizing hydradenoma. Um, now, could this be a, 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 the, a poromatous equivalent? Could it be a benign metastasizing poroma? Gosh, I... I don't know. I, I, I think I'd be rather uncomfortable with that diagnosis, but I don't suppose one can do anything more with this patient. If the patient's had lymph nodes removed, well, I don't know that you could do anything more other than, other than follow the patient up and see whether it recurs again. We could check and see whether that was just one lymph node or whether there were multiple lymph nodes. And finally, I'd be fascinating to know what the people who originally saw this case called this lesion. So Antonina, hopefully I'm going to wander around looking for ducts. And while I do that, perhaps you could, um, you could, enlarge upon the topic of benign metastasizing hydradenoma and see if you think this fits with this case. So over to you. It's actually this case was in our laboratory like two years ago and we interpreted it as a hydradena, low grade hydradena carcinoma. So um, we're left with this conundrum as to whether this is a truly met metastatic, well-differentiated porocarcinoma or whether it's, it's a benign metastasizing variant. 
I, I, I really am very reluctant to make the latter diagnosis. So I think at the end of it all, I'm going to have to regard this as, as carcinoma and um, recommend to the clinician that they investigate the patient very thoroughly for evidence of an, any more distant metastases and certainly to follow the patient up very, very carefully. Uh, and if there's no evidence of disease anywhere else in the body, well, then I think it's going to be down to a wait and see policy. Anyway, I'd be delighted if folks, uh, when you've watched this video, it would be, would be really good if you could make some comments and tell Antonina and myself what you would have called this case, uh, whether you agree or whether you disagree, it would be jolly interesting. So thank you very much for having watched the video and uh, uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you.